So today we're going to be talking about the mystery of Babylon Hope. It started a long time ago in ancient Babylon, but it's progressed since then, and it's become a part of our modern day culture. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. No. Here. No. Okay, so this is a study on Mystery Babylon, a religion that believes in superior knowledge, enlightenment, pantheonism, and Luciferianism, which is just the worship of Satan and the things of Satan. We're going to discover how it got started and what it's become. So first let's read from the Bible. We're going to read Revelation 17, 1 through 6. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee unto the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have remained drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. This is that same so not necessarily a good person. <laughs> Now, the mystery of Babylon culture is made up of three parts. The first being the father figure, the second being the son figure, and the third being the motherly figure. We're going to start off the presentation by talking about Nimrod. Next slide, please. All right. So, Nimrod was a very powerful rebel leader. His name actually means rebel or that is rebel. And you can go to the next slide. Yeah, the next one. And it says right there that he was made a very powerful hunter. He was like phenomenal at war. He was just like known for his bravery and his being like valiant in the face of, you know, life threatening experiences. So the problem though was that he didn't have a he didn't have a fear of God, he wanted people to fear God. And the reason for that was because the Great Flood had just come and it had wiped out all of civilization and all these animals. So he set in people's minds and in their hearts to be afraid of God and that God was um, almost like a superstitious being that needed to, they needed to rebel from and that's what he set up. He wanted to have revenge through religion. He didn't want it to be about love and honoring the things that God had created and represented. He wanted people to lack submission toward him and do their own thing and ultimately do Nimrod's thing and eventually end up worshiping Nimrod and his wife, who we'll talk about in a little bit. On the next slide. So there's him, and he is being a very powerful hunter and going his own way, doing his own thing. Next slide, please. So one of the things that he told his people that they needed to believe in was pantheonism, and this is how it came around. They, instead of worshiping God, they worshiped his creation, which is basically what pantheonism says. And if you read the side, it actually says, Pantheonism, the, the earth and all of its forms and possessions are sacred. We're, we belong to them and they belong to us and that we're kin. So that's what the pantheonism belief believes. All right, next slide. Yeah, so Nimrod just stated that he was standing in for Christ. He was sort of like the Antichrist figure. Um, yeah. So, like, you know, that's what he wanted is for people to worship him. And instead of looking at God for that authority figure, he, people were, like, looking towards him. And it was the first time in all history that people had looked at him 
or at anybody for that matter, and said, this is the leader that we need to follow. Before that time, everybody had just followed God. So it was the first time that we had a human being as a leader, which was significant. But this lady that's on the screen right now is Samaramis. She was believed to be the goddess of wisdom, fertility, the protector of children, and a goddess of enlightenment. So in this Babylonian mystery culture, it's kind of ironic because everything's like kept a mystery and it's kept on the down low. But at the same time, they're telling their believers that they're the enlightened ones. They're the ones that are getting the truth. When in all reality, the truth is being kept from them. All right, next slide. Okay, so she claimed power over life and death, which is obviously an important thing. And her names were known as Isis in Egypt, Ashtoreth in Assyria, Astarte in Armenia, Diana in Rome, Inanna in Sumeria, Ishtar in Babylonia, Artemis in Greece, and the list just goes on and on and on. But the important part is that we remember that she was part of many different cultures. It's where all of them stem from. It's from her. And her name that we're going to talk about is the Miranda, so that it doesn't get like too confusing because she was known as so many different things. Next slide. All right, so it's kind of hard for you. But um, it just basically says that um, kind of like the way that Jesus was um, Christ, and like the saint always has to have like a counterfeit. So his counterfeit for Christ is like an antichrist. His counterfeit for Samaritan's though is to set up somebody that's going to be similar to um, <coughs> like the Holy Spirit figure, and that's kind of like what Samaritan's is. She's the counterfeit that's coming in, and she's going to um, pose as that. Um, in dress and attire, the way that, that Mary is depicted as Jesus' mom, she's known for being full of mercy as were the other goddesses, but um, people kind of take it to a different level sometimes where they want to worship that motherly figure and that's um, what we talk about in slide 11 and 12. Next slide. So these are some of the names of um, the different the different um, mother, son, and father figures. And you can just see that the list is just like really long, you know, for all of these that, where they were derived from. Next slide. So they're kind of taking, um, like a look at this, and they're showing, they're representing each of these women as, um, kind of having that merciful spirit and stuff like that, but um, it's important that we don't confuse who we worship and get confused that um, that we don't let Satan counterfeit that which God established. So, next slide. And that's summer Next slide. Next slide. All right. No, 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 go for that. Sorry. Yeah, that one. Okay. So this is Nimrod's legend. They were based around the June and July months in the calendar, which ends up right now we're gonna talk about Nimrod. So next slide. He was killed by a boar, and that was kind of ironic because remember he was a powerful leader and a powerful hunter. So he was killed by a boar, and it's also ironic because he was a city god who was known for um keeping building walls and stuff and so the walls weren't powerful enough to just keep out this beast and i just find that kind of ironic next slide all right so in order for samaramis to keep her power when nimrod died she had to deify him as the sun god so that he would feel she could keep her place and the only way she could do that now is to deify him and to say that they're um their son had been, had come to her through a virgin birth, which didn't happen, but she claimed that it did, 
And so, next slide. So this is some of the things that um, he's called in like different cultures throughout the world. Um, and you know, that goes back to some of the names we looked at before. Like there's just like a really long list of all that. But there's a scripture verse I wanted to read. All right, so this is Genesis 3, 14 through 15. And it says, so the Lord God said to the serpent, <laughs> Sorry. So the Lord gets it as a serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between her offspring, your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. So right away that's just saying that, see, God had yet again put something in place. And then Satan yet again tried to right away counterfeit that. And you can go to, yeah, that's fine, that's perfect. All right, next slide. Yeah, so that's Tammuz right there. He was known for being a shepherd figure. He had control over the supply of agriculture and milk, which was relevant. Um, you know, he he had this legend about his life. This is Norman. All right, he had this legend about his life, and what happened was basically when Severinus had claimed that his father was a deep was a new deity and he was a sun god, she thought, um, and the legend she had to like go down basically into hell, and she had to uh, resurrect him. Was basically the important part of that. So what happened was he was represented as grain. And every year they would plant these fast dying crops so that they would all wilt and die and then they could have a seasonal mourning. So in that way, it's kind of like a sacrificial thing. And with the resurrection and all, it's kind of like alluding to yet again Satan counterfeiting Christ's walk and Christ's life. During this time, another thing that would happen is the woman would do her tales, they would do temple repairs. And they would even have ceremonies for him in the temple, which is kind of unbelievable. But then, when you read the scripture, there's another one, and it's Ezekiel 8, 14 through 15. And it says, because I never even heard about Tamu, and I was like, this is crazy. But then it's actually in the Bible, it says, Then he brought me to the entrance of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, women were sitting there weeping for Tamu's. He said to me, do you see this son of man? Yet you will see greater abominations than these. So basically the thing that's going on here is this guy comes in, he's completely destroying everything that God created to be holy and perfect as usual. And what's happening now is these people are weeping for a different guy in our God's temple and just, I mean, the kind of just defiance behind that, I think, is just really overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly crazy. So, you can take it to the next slide. Alright, just keep it there for a minute. So, this guy is known as Molech in Canaan, Adonai in Greece, Tammuz in Babylonia, Baal, Bel, Balaam, Akkad. All that stuff. So he has a lot of names too. And they all stink though with Rome, Jupiter, Greece, Zeus, and etc. So even though it's all these different gods and goddesses, they're all the same one. They all come from the same one. Oh. Hold on. Sarah, is that our, our point? <laughs> hey Sarah, is that our American dollar in there? Yeah, hold on a second. I'm trying to figure out where he's at. Because <laughs> uh, this is weird. Are we on the wrong slide? Um, go to 20. It's okay, just go to 20. I think it should be the next one. After the one you're on. Okay, we're on 20 right now. Alright, yeah. So, so um, we're actually going to end up looking at the last slide we just had in a minute. But I wanted to show you that because if you look at some of the symbols up here, the really interesting thing is that each of these, like I said, is like depicted with weather. 
you can see that like Zeus has lightning and Ra has like this sun and um, you know there's a moon like above I think that's supposed to be Allah there's a moon there and then um, I'm not sure which one that is, but there's like a rainbow and he's holding the lightning bolts. I don't know if you can see that. And also each of them has an eagle. So Ra is an eagle in this one. There's an eagle in the bottom corner. There's eagles there. I don't know if you can see it in that one, but the one that's supposed to be Allah is actually an eagle and the other three behind him are people. And then in that one, there's also an eagle sitting, it's gold, and it's right above his knee. So I don't know if you can see all those, but it's kind of interesting because each of these gods was associated with weather phenomena and pretty much eagles. And a lot of them have lightning or bows that they carry with them. So I thought that was kind of interesting, and you're going to see why in a minute. Alright, so go to the next slide. Yeah. So this is one of the reasons why we have horoscopes and astrology and modern culture. It all stems back to these gods and their symbols. And um, this is Diana, but she's actually Semiramis. So that's kind of confusing, but bear with me, because I know that this is confusing. Just, they're all, they all come from Semiramis, Nimrod, and Tammuz. And Tammuz and Nimrod in one story are the same person. So basically, if it's a male, it's Tammuz, and if it's a female, it's Semiramis. But like all the stories parallel, they're like all the same. Like, um, in one, like, no matter what they're talking about, like the way that the seasons come, or like the way that like she goes out and rescues her son, like all the stories link together. It's really incredible if you study it. So, go to the next slide, please. All right. So at this point, all the people were really strong. They were in one accord, and they were all diligent workers because they all spoke one language before the flood. So I have scripture that I wanted to read. It's from. You have to give me a minute because. <laughs> it's Genesis 11, 5 through 9. All right. And it says, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people are one, and they have all one language. And this they will begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Let us go down and there confound their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon all of the face of the earth, and they left to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord there did confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad the face of all the earth. So right before that scripture verse, it explains how God told them to go out and to spread across the face of the earth and to just reproduce and be happy. But yet again, man's disobedience, we didn't do that. So he came down and he disobeyed the language. Because remember at this point, he had already promised that he wasn't going to send another flood. And he showed that to um, Noah by giving him the symbol of the rainbow. So they formed a brotherhood, worshiping Nimrod and Samaramis. He called Samaramis the queen of heaven, and they would intoxicate people with water and honey and even hallucinogens. From this point, priests would seal people instead of having them represent their secrets to God in like a confession. And like, because we're supposed to go to God, we're supposed to confess our sins, and he forgives us and stuff like that. But instead of doing that, the priests would go and they would seal people. <clears throat> And so nothing ever really was relieved. They still had all this built up tension because they'd never gotten any of these things off their chest. So because of that, there was also a fear among the people and they just broke for very disobedient fruits as well. The next scripture verse I'm looking up is Genesis 11, one through four. It says, and the whole earth was of one, 
of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Let us go build a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto the heaven, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad the face of the entire earth. So yet again, they were in direct disobedience to God's will. So there was two reasons why they built that tower. The first reason was because Nimrod was still afraid that God was going to send another flood to wipe out the earth because he knew within himself that he was in the wrong. And I think that inwardly he felt shame for that because we all have a conscience. And he knew that what he was doing was wrong. And I think he knew that he was he deserved to be punished. So the first reason he built it is to keep it um, to keep the water up. And we know that because it says he built it with brick and he used slime for mortar. And the reason why he did that is because he didn't want water to be able to come through and ruin the city. And that's what brick and mortar will do. The second thing that he did is um, he wanted to use it to reach the heavens. And I was naive and I kind of thought, like before I read this story, I was like, oh, why would God be mad at that? You know, he wants to be closer to God. How wonderful. But um, he didn't want to worship God. He wanted to worship these gods, and he wanted people to worship him. And then it started making more sense. So he was, I, I wanted to draw attention to something that I thought was really interesting. Noah built, the first thing Noah did when he got off the ark was he built an altar to God, and he built it with stones, and they were God's creation, and he did it God's way, and it was for God to get closer to God. When Nimrod, on the other hand, decided to do this, the first thing he decided he was going to do is he was going to build bricks and tar. It was going to be his own creation. It was going to be his way, and he wanted to distance himself from God. And that's what all those people that followed him wanted to do, too. All right, so go to the next slide. Okay, this was interesting because there's a lot of, um, in like modern day America, because that's what we're kind of talking about too, it's like how, why all these things are relevant. So these are like just different, um, basically towers that we set up all around America and stuff like that. And um, just we kind of, we'll kind of start to see like the draw back towards that, that mystery Babylon culture as we continue to go on. But um, this was one of the things that I just wanted to draw attention to because it has to do with, you know, towers and, you know, going back to that Babylon place. All right, next slide. So this is another interesting thing, is that sometimes some priests wear a hat that's similar to um, the hat that Dagon wore. Dagon was a fish god. And another thing that's interesting is the fish symbol there, because another thing um, is that like the fish symbol has become kind of like more popular with like um, being represented in Christianity and stuff like that. And it's just kind of interesting because that's not necessarily a Christian symbol that could be, you know, more of a pagan symbol. All right, next slide. I'm not exactly sure where we're at right now, to be honest. But that's okay, I'll just go with it. So, um, Nimrod was just ultimately trying to save his own possessions, despite God's promise. And I think a lot of us do that personally, where, you know, sometimes, you know, I know in my own life, you know, I'll be like, oh, you know, I have to do this so that I can get that. And I think it's good to set goals for our lives. But when we go to the point of worrying and stressing about it, when we're doing everything that we should be doing, instead of sometimes just taking it easy and letting, you know, God work his miracles, I think that, that can be a promise for some of us, or a problem for some of us. Um, and it was like, especially when God says in his word that he's got our back, you know, we should trust that, you know. Because one of the problems with Nimrod is he was so afraid that God was going to come in and destroy them again that he kept rejecting God. And I think the message here, too, in a way, is that we should just stop trying to focus so much on things that we can get for our own selves 
It focused more on God because when we chase after, <coughs> after <coughs> sorry, when we chase after other things, sometimes we end up excluding God or like not making time for God. And so, um, you know, when God gives us a promise for our lives, that's you know that should be important that we cherish that promise and we don't just exclude it. Right. Um. Go to the next one. <laughs> Okay, so, hold on a second. Let me check my PowerPoint. All right. Yeah. All right, so, hold on. Anyway, so, um, another thing that was interesting is that um, in 2000 BCE, which means before the Christian era, um, this one guy, his name was Ernamu, he constructed a temple for a moon god, and the moon god was called um, Sin. Um, it, the name for the temple, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce because like, it's really long, but it meant house whose foundation creates terror. And modern day Ur is actually in Iraq, and that's where the moon god Allah is now worshipped. So I thought it was interesting too how like, just another like, way that we can like look at these these things from the Babylon cult and just look at how they are so relevant for today and see them and go to ourselves, wow, this is actually still around. This is still, you know, thriving through different cultures and things like that. I kind of believe that, you know, when I've done this report, everything that I've missed because I'd seen these things, but like it just kind of like went over my head like, Oh, yeah, of course I know that. But like, it was never like a connection. So that's kind of like what I want to show to you guys tonight. So, um, actually, if you could go to the previous slide, that'd be great. Thank you. So we kind of talked a little bit before about like the eagle and the arrows and the lightning bolts. But like, look at some of this stuff. You can see again the eagle and the arrows and that guy has a lightning and a bird, and it's kind of interesting because now on our dollar bill, there's light, there's arrows, and it's an eagle. <coughs> Another interesting thing that's in this picture that I didn't mention yet is that he's holding a branch, and it looks to be like an oak branch. And oak leaves were very important in the mystery culture. They um they were a symbol of Semiramis and Nimrod, and another um. Symbol of Samaritans, Nimrod, or owls. And if you go to the next slide now. So you can see, like, this is Baal, I believe. And, like, behind him is, like, this owl figure. And then, you know, there's, like, owls and it's got, like, a crown on it or whatever. But look at the way Washington, D.C. is set up. It's kind of set up like an owl figure. So it's kind of interesting to, like, see some of these things and go to yourself, wait a minute, what's really going on here? Because I don't think many of us see an aerial view of things like Washington, D.C., but when it's highlighted for us, it's a lot easier to see. Too. But um, another thing, as far as the bows go, is when the Antichrist comes in, it says in Revelation that he will be holding a bow and he will be coming, I think, on the Raiders? Raiders, I believe, right? I think so. All right, so I think you can go to the next slide. Okay, so there again is the owl. So do you see how this is relevant? On the dollar bill, and if you have, the next time you have a dollar bill, I want you to look at this around here because I'll put the right hand on. The next time, <laughs> March, look, I'm not even kidding. I have a dollar bill, and I went and I looked at Tokyo, you, I didn't own this. I was looking at online and I saw this and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Right. there's no owl. There's an owl on your dollar bill peeking out right behind that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can go to the next slide now. All right, there again, there's the eagle and the oak leaves right there. But you can also see, and it's kind of late, so I don't know if you can see it, but there's a torch there. 
if the torch that's there isn't a modern torch, it's kind of like the torches that are represented kind of being old-fashioned, old-style torches. And I thought that was kind of interesting because um, the, it's almost an Olympic-style torch. And the relevance behind that is that the Olympics were actually an offering to Zeus, and Zeus was after Nimrod. He was, um, he is Nimrod. So um, it was kind of interesting because it's like, are they alluding to another symbolism here? All right, next slide. This is the one dollar bill again, so um, you can just take out your one dollar bills if you want. There's a key. And isn't that interesting? Because the Mystery Babylon symbol is known for being mysterious and remember that spirit of enlightenment and knowledge. Well, if you look up the meaning behind the key, it's also mystery and knowledge. And so there's a link there too. One second. I'm trying to hold on a second. Let me look at my PowerPoint. All right, the next one is a little bit um, weird, yeah. So, this is actually a pound, I believe it's 20 pounds. Um, that star symbol there that's upside down is a very occultic symbol. Ron, I couldn't get the, um, my internet went down on my computer right before, um, right before I saved that onto the PowerPoint. But this, this is actually a satanic symbol, this star. And what it is, is where the face, where the pentagon is in the middle, that's where the face would be. The two things that jut out from the side are like, um, ears. It's kind of like a man goat like creature. And then the two that come up like this on the star, those are where the horns would be. And then he has like a beard that comes down because he's basically like a goat like a goat man looking symbol and that's like satanic and that's representative of the antichrist now another thing i don't have that i wish i had is there's three stars on here one is the satanic star which i believe is that one another one is the star of david and then the third one is um another pagan star and um i wish i had those highlighted but like i said i didn't but um me and ron after the um because I knew about the three stars, but I didn't know why the star was um, satanic. And after, um, during um, Saturday, I think it was, me and Ron, we looked at different like occultic symbols, and that's an occultic symbol. Um, so you can go to the next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you so much, by the way. All right, so this is gonna be bad, but I'm going to attempt this lesson. <laughs> Inuit Coipolis Noas Ordu Sakura. <laughs> so um, what that means, that's also on your dollar bill, by the way. It means, get this, it means the commencement of a new world order. So anybody that's read the Bible or the end times knows, well not necessarily the Bible, but you read a lot about the Bible, so I know about this, <laughs> like me, but um, we're going to be geared towards like a new world order. It's, it says in the Bible that it's going to be um, like global world order, and you can see in everywhere how we're kind of starting to push for that, even on the news and the weather station and all that stuff like that. And it's just really interesting that now on our dollar bill, and this has been around for a long time, these both, how it says the commencement of a new world order. Hmm. Another thing about that eye that's right up there, you take it to the next seat, is it is, it's the all seeing eyes. And you know, they talk about like the Illuminati, and I don't know if anybody's heard about that, but um, it's like a group of people that believe that they're like enlightened and stuff like that. So again, part of that mystery of Babylon, I'm not saying that the Illuminati is real. I'm just saying that it has a lot of similar traits of the Babylon culture, and that can be one of the reasons why it's so around. Next slide, please. Thank you. So like, if you look at like the old times, like all I'm saying is this stuff has been around forever. You can see Baal, Tammuz, Ra, Horus, 
um, Mithra, Nimbus, and Apollo, they all have that halo. They all have mostly um, symbols that represent them with, um, you know, astrology and stars and planetary stuff, and usually bows and lions and things like that. So, yeah, and it, um, in the in the end times, what it says in the Bible is that there's going to be a new um, secular spirit that's going to arise. And um, that's that's also, you can translate the Latin two different ways. One way is the New World Order, or it could be the New Secular Order. So it's kind of interesting that um, that all the stuff is just coming to pass now that does line up with what God has said. So I found that all very interesting. Oh, not seeing please. Thank you. So um, I believe this is the Masonic symbol right here. But again, on there, there's a halo. There's an all saying I, and there, there's an all saying I too. And if you look there, there's the Masonic symbol. So it's just, they're saying that um, these all, all these symbols are not recent. They're not things that people have just come up with. It's not, you know, all the Illuminati is a new modern thing. They, all of these symbols, all of these things, they date way back to ancient Babylon and the dawn of civilization. And it's just slowly been fed through, you know, history. And it's just gradually becoming more and more prevalent, I think. And um, so I would just, I would just, I said all this to say that, um, to just be aware of things that you know that, well, because you don't know, you know, that's why we had this discussion tonight, is because I didn't know about these things. I mean, I had no idea that there was like an occultic symbol on Britain's currency or even on our currency or anything like that. Um, but, you know, it's just it's just interesting to know that um, Christ warned against the Pharisees because they ended up forming a religious cult Julius Caesar was a high priest of the pagan cult. Nero followed the cult. The Middle Ages were so dark because people were slaughtered for not submitting to this cult. So it started a long, long time ago, but it's continued to remain alive through strange events. It makes mention of itself. It glorifies itself through our modern day cultures and beliefs. And it's just important that we don't accidentally slip into these routines, that we don't, um, do things like horoscopes and follow astrology and stuff because even though it can seem really innocent um and we might you know have done some of these things innocently that um you know we, we shouldn't um do things like that because it does date back to that and it is part of um paganic worship and um is part of you know that pantheonistic culture and stuff like that so, um, you know, I would just um, suggest that we should be strong in our witness of the truth. We should make sure that, you know, we're saved and we're doing everything that we can. Um, you know, if you have done horoscopes or, you know, anything that's, you know, something like that. I mean, we have a forgiving, loving God and stuff like that. And, um, I mean, it's just incredible to learn about these things and think to ourselves, you know, how many of us have heard about this? And we've been probably reading the Bible our whole lives, in church our whole lives. I've been in church my whole life. I'm 18 years old. I never knew about any of this. So um, just when we see, like, things in, like, the scripture, because, um, like, when I was reading, when I, because I've read that Revelation on Revelation, um, the one that says she's the great Babylon, and I've read the one where it said they were weeping for two moves in the temple. And I kind of just like skimmed over that stuff. But like if you actually stop and like do some research sometimes when we read through things that seem irrelevant in the scripture, I think that we can all just learn a lot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you have any questions, ask Ron, because I don't know. <laughs> um, and I hope you all have a wonderful night. It was a pleasure. One more.
more slide. Oh, oh, one more slide. Okay, so <laughs> I thought I was done. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so this is Daniel 9 1. It says, In the first year of Darius, the son of, not going to chop that name, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. So, again, not going to chop that name. He died, leaving his kingdom, Media, to Darius to Mede, 12 months before the fall of Babylon. So he began his reign in 535 before the Christian area. So basically what all this is saying, because it's like pretty, like I was saying, confusing, um, is just that this was all prophesied to happen. Like all this was prophesied. Um, it says right there in the scripture exactly what was going to happen. And basically what these bullet points are telling us is just how it came to happen. So it isn't mentioned to Moses here, but it says in the first year of Darius. And if you look there at the second bullet point, it says his first year of reign began in Tishri 22, 535 before the Christian era. era. So what it's saying basically is that Babylon would have fallen to Tammuz in 16, 534 BCE. So that's just like a year before. So it's like right there, you know, before the 12 months. So it's just, everything is in God's control too. I mean, that's another thing we can remember because like, it's not like we can't fall into the thing that they fell into. We're, we're afraid of these events that are going to happen. God said that they're going to happen. And the best thing is for them to happen because that means God's word is true. And so, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just kind of cool actually to follow along and realize that we have a supreme God that is the ultimate and omega, the one and only way to get to heaven, and that he's got it all in the palm of his hand. He's know, he knows what he's doing. Satan's not throwing him off. He's not, he's not the one in power. That God's in the one in power. He's predicting all of this, and he's telling us exactly what's going to happen. Amen. So. Amen. 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 Awesome. <laughs> Uh, before Sarah uh, sits down, um, and she doesn't claim to be a Bible scholar, uh, Dr. Ron Pantry with us, he is a Bible scholar. <laughs> and so, um, if you've got any questions, though, I'd like to give her an opportunity to answer that, or uh, one of us can uh, answer that. Um, because it, it, this, this is real stuff. Um, she's absolutely right. A lot of people look at their money, or they see the Statue of Liberty, or they see the, the White House, or the way that, and, and they don't realize what these symbols mean. Here these symbols are nothing that, you know, sometimes we think that these things are just by accident, or made up, or like something they just dreamed up one day, and then they're not. When you find out that there's a history, that it goes way back to Babylon, and to some of these things in the Bible, before Christ was even born, and you can see that this stuff was already uh, inundated into our culture and how it's been brought forward. And uh, one of the things that uh, Sarah brought up is that these are false gods, false religions, and we're worshiping these things. Some people worship money, uh, some people worship these gods. She talked about Allah, she talked about uh, even Isis was on there, and, and there's a whole lot more to that. But uh, I know she kind of skimmed over some of it. But do you have any questions that you'd like to ask her? Okay, what's your question? I'm just waving hi. <laughs> hi. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. What is astronomy? Um, it's kind of like the um, study of plants, but it's taking it a step further to where you're almost um, worshiping them in a way because you're expecting them to give you information about the future. So basically, um, looking at the planets like as a god because you are expecting them to tell you what's going to happen or like how your life is going to go and play out and stuff like that. So, yeah. okay. and, and also, who carries into the horoscopes? Um, and so they've taken that, which. Uh, one of the things is that they, they, this was something that God had, God created the heavens and the earth, but we're not supposed to worship the heavens and earth, the created things, but to worship God. But sometimes people look to the stars or to tarot cards and these type of things or crystal ball and try to predict what's going to happen or happen in somebody's life. And so they'll use astrology 
which is a study of stars, and there's a whole lot more to it. But uh, basically, uh, it, it is demonic. It doesn't have to be because God did create the heavens and the earth. We can learn things from that. And in the uh, Bible talks about the, the uh, wise men and the shepherds, how they saw the stars and the star of David. And it, you can follow some things, and they're, they're from God. But you have to be careful because everything that God does, you've got to remember that Satan tries to counterfeit it. And that's what Sarah was showing tonight, is there's a true God. His word is true. And then the Bible, you can read about a lot of this stuff and then about the one world and how there's going to be a one world leader. And this person is going to ultimately be uh, Satan himself, a satanic figure. And uh, so it talks about this in the Bible. But you don't realize this stuff has been planned out since the foundation of the earth from the very beginning. And you can see that. And I'm sure as you did this Bible study, you saw that just open up. And you go, wow. Because that's what happens to me and my brother on his shoes. It just blows you away because it's all there. It's all laid out. I just wanted to say one thing, Pastor. It's really interesting that you brought up the cards because uh, Samaritans is on those two. And, like, it's just, just, yeah, I mean, like, it's just interesting that you brought that up because, like, it's just, like, just crazy. Just crazy. All these things are just seeping into our culture and, and through, you know, I mean, like, um, not to put down any singers or artists or anything, but like when, you know, um, people sometimes have like a tendency to be, you know, seductive with the songs they sing or with the way they perform and stuff like that. And even that all goes back to it because it's about secularity um, and about, you know, just being, you know, it said that she was, you know, um, basically the, you know, the ultimate, you know, um, you know, harlot and that she was, you know, just like, very, very um, paganistic in that way. So, yeah, it's just interesting to throw that out. Thank you for bringing that up because it's in our culture. If you look at some of the bands and some of the shirts they're wearing, uh, just just take a look at them, do a little study on satanic symbols in their modern music and some of the musicians and uh, performers that you watch. They'll have goat heads, they have symbolic satanic symbols on them. Uh, you talked about the Freemasons and the Illuminati. It's all there. It will. Blow, I'm telling you, when you start studying this stuff, it will blow your mind because you never knew all that stuff was there and how it has come through and how how much uh, uh, our modern day uh, um, a lot of the stars or um, a lot of the uh, uh, people performers will use this stuff. And uh, so it, it's really amazing. Yeah, see, John knows. He's got the goat's head going back there. That's, that's an old one. But uh, thank you for that question. It was very good. Awesome. Okay, Pastor, you want to read the next one? Don't worry, I'll, I won't ask when today. <laughs> it's okay. If you guys have any questions, you can ask Ron. And I have right. a question. Oh, no, you don't. Know. <laughs> ask yourself. Yeah. When is your next... When is your next message? I don't know. <laughs> Soon, I hope. It's going to yeah. be in Idaho. Oh, Everyone heard that. Okay. Sarah, it's not a question, it's not a question but um, I don't, Pastor and Ron can correct me, but I believe that the way it's pronounced, that king's name is Ahasuerus, King Ahasuerus, who oh, was king. Yeah, he has yeah. Yep. Desert the king. That's a good king, too. Desert Hazmus. That's good. Yeah, see? Ask Gail. She knows. That's right. Yeah. We got some Bible teachers and uh, Bible studiers here. And that's good. You really need to get into the Bible because um, this this stuff is, is really laid out. Like you said, the, the more you study, the more prevalent you realize this stuff is in our society. It's, it's everywhere. I, I, when I first started studying this stuff, I got overwhelmed because everywhere I looked, I could see some of the symbols from our money, from some of the speeches that our uh, elected officials will give. Uh, you looked at 911. Anybody ever read The Harbinger? Yes. 
Very good book, The Heart Reader. If you haven't picked it up, uh, extremely good book. Uh, you don't realize that all this stuff is significant. I used to think that things just happened by chance. People said things, or there's these peace deals and treaties made overseas. You look at Israel, you look at Iran, all this stuff, and you're thinking, well, this stuff just happens. None of it just happens. It's all ordained by God. And uh, the Bible talks about it, and uh, a lot of these things were predicted, and it all falls into place, like Sarah had said. You can see all this stuff lining up with where we are in the end times and where we're headed. And not to be afraid of it, the Bible says that when we see these things happening, um, we're supposed to know that our Lord draws near, draws nigh. And uh, so it's exciting to be alive. These are some of the most exciting days that we'll ever see. And uh, we get to see technology just exploding, the things they can do medically. Uh, knowledge is going to increase. But along with that increase, um, there, there's also going to be a, a rise of uh, uh, satanic things taking place on this earth. Of course, God knows what those things are. And uh, if you want to know more, Miss Sarah's going to teach you again, right? All right. <laughs> So, so how many have, how many knew all this before? You, you knew everything that was on here. You nope. understood everything before she spoke any. Nope, I did. I did. Okay, you knew all about this. Yeah. So then, how many did not? I knew a lot of it. Not all of it. Even when she, when when I saw this first slide, the dollar, I was like, wow, wasn't it? It was like, where'd you get this stuff? And the thing is, all this is being done right in front of our eyes. Yeah. And I've learned something over these, I don't want to tell you how old I am, but I'm really <laughs> ancient. 24. And all, the, all these years, I've learned something about Satan. And that is, he is so arrogant that he plans on everything he's going to do, he does it all out right out in the open hmm. and I don't know if it's, if it's because God has a mandate that he must reveal it but everything all the secrets he's doing right out in the open That's right. and if you have it if you I mean this has been in front of your eyes like the, like the owl on the dollar bill how many things have you not noticed hmm. And I would just encourage you, and I, I, I'll bet Sarah would echo this, but the end is coming soon. Amen. And it behooves us, right, to, to understand this. And I really appreciate what you've done today. Thank you. Thank Great you. job. Do you want to close the trip? I think these guys are the You sure? Yeah, right. Sure. What? No, I'm just oh. waving hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> OK. Uh, hey. <clears throat> Dear Jesus, just please protect us and bless us in our show this Lord. Take us all to from our destinations safely and come and take us to accidents or anything that's forming us to those who I thank you and I praise you for the time that we've had here tonight and for all the things that we've learned. I ask that you would just have your healing a hand upon the all of us and anoint us wherever we go. And I thank you and I praise you. Yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to say problem. when Pastor was, he brought up a really good point, another good point. <laughs> um, with the, um, when we're talking about the singers and stuff, it's like just to tell you like how easily it can sneak up on us. Um, I know that one of the celebrities, and I'm not putting him down because I listen to his music, but one of the celebrities that actually was recently wearing a necklace um, that had, it was actually Semiramis, and um, I don't even know if he knows, he probably doesn't. But it was Justin Bieber, and he's like supposed to be a Christian. So like this stuff is like everywhere. It has a way of like sneaking up on you, and like you won't even know, you know. So it's kind of interesting. I got an idea. Next next time she does that, she's like, "What? How about, uh, yes, you'll do it again. Um, how about next time that she does it, uh, she brings in some of the symbols that are more of, you know, like what's in our society now." And, Today's society, yeah. She showed kind of the background and showed a little bit about like our money, our financial system. And so there were some symbols on there. I don't know if you noticed. Um, there, there were other symbols on there that 
uh, have to do, like the bull, if you watch our bull stock, the stock exchange, I've got a big bull in front. That, all that stuff, uh, you know, the reason why they bombed nine, uh, during 9-11 uh, was New York City is because that is our hub. That, that's where the financial system, the Twin Towers, was our financial system for the United States. And there's so much more. But uh, next time, why don't we, uh, would that be okay, say, you can put up some, some pictures and some, show some symbols and some of the things in our modern art, our culture, um, some of our singers and, and performers uh, that are out there today that, and they probably don't even know they're doing this. They don't even realize what some of these symbols are. And uh, yet they've got the roots of Babylon. Uh, some of them are even downright satanic. And uh, they don't even realize that or some of them, some of them that I've seen with interviews do. And they basically sold out to the Antichrist. I mean, they're, they're sold out to uh, Satan, bottom line. It's scary stuff, but it is in our society. So next time she comes and we'll announce it, uh, she will show us uh, some uh, clips and maybe share a little bit about that. Can we do that? All right. All right, let's give her one more hand. I suggest it. All right. Stop. Don't, don't bring in a picture of Justin Bieber. Right? No, no. We don't, we don't want to see Satan. We don't want to see Satan in this house. We don't want to see your mom swoon. Justin Bieber just got in trouble. You know why? He got deported. Because he got tired and he didn't want to meet with his fans after his concert. And all his fans were waiting for him. Instead, he told them that he was tired, so he left. They said it was a security problem. So I, I stay, I stay up on this stuff. So true story. <laughs> it's a bad story. <laughs>